Hey guys, it's Kirby the Bookish Nurse, and today I'm bringing you my mid-month June wrap-up. I've tried to do a TBR this month, and lo and behold, I'm, I'm not very good at it. I'm very much a mood reader, so I think that I'm going to pretty much, other than like my buddy reads and things like that, um, I'm going to pretty much be not doing a TBR, I don't think, because, well, see, the thing is, I really like making lists, and I like to be able to check off lists, but I don't like being told what to do, even if I'm the one doing the telling. So, here we are. These are the things, I think that I've read eight or eight or nine books so far this month, and this is what I've read. I started out this month by finishing up the Mortal Instruments series. I actually think that I read the majority of this in May. I know I finished it in June. I think I finished it on like the 2nd, maybe. So this is The City of Heavenly Fire by Cassandra Clare. It's the last book in the Mortal Instruments series. I really liked how she wrapped this series up. I appreciated the fact that even though it is YA, she didn't completely do away with stakes. A lot of times in YA, we come across huge stakes. The world's going to end, all this, and then the war is over and everybody lives happily ever after. And I don't really like that. I don't want to say what does happen at the end of this book, but just know things and people are lost. And I really enjoyed the, her conclusion to that series. The next book I read is called Why We Broke Up by Daniel Handler. Daniel Handler is the real name of Lemony Snicket. And in this book, it's, it's almost like an adult picture book, which I didn't know existed, but it does. Well, not adult. This is also young adult. But it's a picture book, kind of, going through why our main protagonist feels like the relationship between her and her boyfriend ended. And it goes all the way from the beginning of their relationship, just little things that she's returning his things to him. And she gives like a little story for each object that's in the box that she's returning. And at the end is, and this is why we broke up. It was cute. Like, I'm not going to read it again, probably. But if you want just like a little, oh, then, I mean, you might enjoy that. Next, I read Serpent and Dove by Shelby Marin. This was our June book of the month pick, and it was not something that I was going to pick up on my own. So I'm glad that the book club got me to read this book. I think that I ended up giving it like 3.5 stars. I enjoyed it. I thought that it was silly. It was very fast paced and easy to get through. But to me, this book felt a whole lot like if Sarah J. Mass and Seth Rogen got together and wanted to write a little enemies to lovers tale. Because a lot of the humor, the, the book is filled with comedic relief, which sometimes I appreciate it and sometimes I was like, whoa, man, calm, calm down. It's okay. You can have a serious moment. It's fine. Overall, I did enjoy it. This is a witch and a witch hunter through circumstances beyond their control. They are forced into kind of an arranged marriage. It's a true, like, enemies to lovers. They hate each other at first. Like, they legitimately hate each other. And over time, they kind of grow to love each other. I'm not going to say that it was one of my favorite books ever, but I'm probably going to continue on with the series. And I feel like the way that this one ended, I feel like if the things that this one ended on are the main focus of the next book, I'm probably going to like the next book better than I did this one. The next thing I read was Firebreak by Nicole Corner Stace. I immensely enjoyed the first half of this book. I thought the world was brilliant. I thought it was 
paced very well. I thought the stakes were high enough. Uh, the mystery was interesting. I enjoyed the characters. Somewhere around the second half of the book, everything just kind of, I'm not sure if maybe we needed more time with some of these aspects or I'm not sure what happened, but something, something about the tone changed. It brought it from probably a 4.5 down to like a 3 for me. If you like super tech stuff, you would probably still enjoy the second half. But the second half to me, it felt very rushed. I did read something that the author put out on Goodreads saying that um, this is an own voices story. The main character is Ace, as is the writer. I didn't know that. I couldn't tell that because it wasn't explicitly stated. However, I mean, there also wasn't any romance. So I, I guess that's, I guess that's it. But she said that she is asexual, aromantic, and so is our protagonist. So if you're interested in having that type of rep in a story, like I said, the beginning, loved. I flew through the beginning, no issues. That second half, though, it just kind of, I don't know. I don't know if it got just a little too tropey for me. It, it wasn't for me. But if you're super into sci-fi, into the, the technological aspect of sci-fi, you would probably still really enjoy it. Next, I read my first five star of the month, and that was The House in the Cerulean Sea. I've spoken about it several times. It's a book about a caseworker who deals with magical children who goes out on a job expecting the worst and finds his, his life. He finds his life, and it is such a beautiful story. I loved watching these kids come into themselves. I loved watching actually our protagonist really grow into who he's supposed to be i thought that it was done beautifully next i read the novella all systems read by martha wells it is the first novella in the Murderbot stories i was expecting it to be i'm not sure what i expected but it, what i expected whatever i expected it's not what i got it was really it was funny our main protagonist is a murder bot that is a bot that is specifically designed for warfare. That's not really, it's not really what they got either. <laughs> Our murder bot is lazy. It's not very good at being a murder bot. Like, yes, it does its job. It, it kills things and people but they're super obsessed with like soap operas and sitcoms they'll have a battle and then they go back to the ship to like recharge and he'll put himself on standby and watch soap operas so that he doesn't have to deal with the humans it's it's really funny it's funny and if you like sci-fi at all read that because it was so good five stars I'm definitely going to continue with that series. So this whole month I've been reading uh, The Way of Shadows by Brent Weeks and I'm still reading it. I think I'm 300 pages in but I've really I've really enjoyed it but it is very dark. If you decide to pick up this book just trigger warnings there is tons of sexual violence through throughout for towards the men and the women. It is like every chapter, it feels like, has some type of sexual violence attached to it. And, and none, of it, none of it is overly graphic, but it is explicitly implied. It's an oxymoron, but it is like you definitely know what is going on, and it is horrific. Because at the beginning of this book, our protagonist is 11. And his best friend is like 12, I think. And then the the third best friend is like seven. She's a girl. Um, so we have like a seven-year-old, 11-year-old, and like a 12 or 13-year-old. And there is, there's violence of all kinds all throughout. I'm pretty sure this would be considered grimdark. 
but there is just an unheard of amount of sexual violence in this first book so be aware of that if you're going to pick it up because it's so dark i kind of found myself having to go lean into other types of books like in between reading it so that i didn't get stuck in that like place and I picked up The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. Y'all, I think I might be a romance reader now. Like, who even am I right now? I, I think I might be a romance reader. And I just have been picking up the wrong romance books my entire life. Because The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren was, I read it in one day. Like, I picked it up yesterday and finished it yesterday it was so easy to read the pacing i thought was wonderful the very last like two or three chapters in that book i wasn't extremely impressed with but i was still fine with them i still enjoyed them but i wanted to stay on vacation longer with these people so that i could just watch them interact because they are so funny i laughed so hard and if it, it's not overly smutty, which is my problem with a lot of romance books. I'm not really a smut reader. So if, if that's your thing, if that's what you, you want to read, you might not enjoy this book as much. Because while there are sex scenes, it's more of a like fade to black situation. We have our protagonist. Her sister is just overly lucky. She wins everything. Everybody loves her. Whatever. And she's getting married she won everything at her wedding so she won the venue she won the dress she won the catering she won the honeymoon she won the everything about it was free she won it all so the best man is the groom's brother his name is ethan and ethan and our protagonist hate each other and the, it's there there is a misunderstanding trope but with this particular misunderstanding I kind of get it like I feel like it's realistic why she thought he hated her one of the quirks for our best man is that he doesn't he doesn't do buffets there's people breathing on the food he don't want to eat that and there's kids they like wipe their nose and touch the spoons and he just mm -mm. No, he don't want no part of that so he, he he orders his own food and I don't remember what was going on with the the girl but why she didn't eat it but there's a seafood buffet after the wedding for the reception that was free that the bride had won and in the middle of them eating like during the speeches and stuff everybody just gets violently sick every person there just gets violently like projectile vomiting sick except for the best man and our protagonist and so the bride the sister is just like no y'all have to go on my my honeymoon because it was free and i don't want to waste it and it's non-refundable and so there's some bickering and they end up going together and it was just so cute they finally agreed to go on this honeymoon together but in order to redeem it they have to be fake married so there there's several things that come up that I did not expect at all and it was just it was it was so funny and it did very adequately pull me out of the dark spot that way of shadows put me into so now I'm gonna go back to the dark place and I'm gonna have to find something else that's equally lovable <laughs> to pull me back out in in 30 more chapters um, I think this shouldn't really be part of a wrap-up but I think I'm gonna, I found this at my library. I think I'm going to use it as kind of a buffer in between the worst of the chapters. Um, I'm not really sure what it's about, but it just looked super cute to me. Like, And I really liked the way that the... You, can, you can't really see that. But I really liked the way the art looked. I think she's supposed to be like a super villain sidekick. And I think that's going to be funny. And I think that'll help with my little in between, in between the darkness fades because I need it. That's my mid-month June wrap up. 
Let me know what y'all have been reading for the past few weeks down in the comments. I will see y'all again on Thursday, hopefully. I'll see y'all later. Bye.